off to a bad start, but thanks for inviting me. Um, as said, I'm Evelyn Nazeo, and I used to be assistant professor at the Department of uh, Biological Psychology at the FU, and that's why I was invited here, um, because during that time I linked data from the Netherlands Twin Register to microdata from Statistics Netherlands, and we did that as a pilot to test the recently developed uh, Odyssey Secure Supercomputer platform. And um, that platform actually brings, I'm happy to tell you a bit about it because it's actually providing a lot of opportunities to link different data sources to each other and uh, allow us to answer new uh, exciting research questions. Um, so Odyssey stands for Open Data Infrastructure for Social Science and Economic Innovations. And it's a collaboration between CBS, um, SURF, a company that provides high performance computing and many longitudinal research cohorts in the Netherlands. Um, but first, let me introduce you to the Netherlands Twin Register. Uh, I gathered that most of you are from uh, FGB, so you probably uh, already know a bit about it, but it was founded in 1987 and over 200,000 people are currently taking part. They're all uh, a member or a multiple or a member of a multiple family. Um, and Young twins, they are, um, we, we did longitudinal data collection uh, by eight specific surveys uh, on the development uh, of the children. So parents fill out surveys and when the twins are in primary school, uh, their teachers are also invited to participate. And then when the children uh, turn uh, into adolescents, they themselves can start to uh, participate. And then we also have adult twins that participate uh, and they do not receive age-specific surveys, but they receive a survey on health, lifestyle uh, and personality every two to three years. Um, and then in subgroups where we also have collected data on, for example, um, IQ, EEG, MRI, um, cardiovascular, cardiovascular measures. Um, and also, in addition, we have uh, DNA and other biological samples. So here's an impression of the type of data that the NTR has on the right side. Um, you see that's all data that has been collected directly from the uh, participants. And on the left side, you actually see um, Statistics Netherlands, which has a quite different type of data. They have registered data. So they have data from many organizations, um, for example, on income, um, on migration, on uh, educational attainment, um, and that they have that for almost everyone uh, in the Netherlands. So if you would actually combine these two types of different data, um, it allows you to answer many new research questions that were not um, we could not answer before when we had uh, when we didn't link these data together. Um, so this for you who are already familiar with the uh, CBS remote access environment, this is already uh, possible. So you can link cohort data to uh, statistics Netherlands data. Um, but this environment has uh, a limit with regard to the size of the files that can be uploaded um, and with regard to uh, how much computing power there is. So that actually prevents large scale uh, analyses. And for example, the NTR, um, I told you we have genotype data, epigenetics data, um, and these data are too large to be uploaded uh, to Statistics Netherlands. In addition, um, Cohorts can link their data to CBS currently, but they cannot link their data to CBS as well as to another cohort. So if you want to, for example, analyze the same CBS measure in both cohorts, it's not possible to, uh, to do that. Um, you have to share your data outside of the safe CBS environment, and then uh, you would need to upload to CBS, but that's not uh, always feasible. So the Odyssey Secure Supercomputer actually solved those two shortcomings. Um, but it's important to note that this OSSC platform is hosted uh, on Cartesius, which is the supercomputer, um, and that is actually Linux-based. So um, it's not like there's a Windows um, interface. So what you would, um, so what you have to keep in mind that for 
example, you cannot use SPSS uh, on that system. So, okay, what we did to test the OSSC platform was that we linked uh, genotypes from uh, the NTR to data on uh, healthcare expenditure from CBS. And the research question that we wanted to answer was which genetic variants are related to differences in healthcare expenditure? Not because we thought um, we're going to find genes that uh, explain differences in healthcare expenditure, um, but we wanted to use genetics as a research tool to get more insight into the association between specific traits and diseases um, and their link with uh, healthcare expenditure. So for this purpose, we run a so-called genome-wide association study. I will not go into any of the methods that um, we used or the results of this study, but I will tell you something about um, how we linked our data. So NTR genotype data are actually already stored at uh, SURF and other cohort data are stored at the NTR and like for example age and gender um, and then at CBS we had the healthcare expenditure data so this means that we actually had three different lo locations where uh, our data were and all these data sets um, there were identifiers in those data sets but they were all different uh, identifiers and we had to um, link them all together on the OSSC platform, but not before all those identifiers were encrypted to ensure that in the linked data set, no one could identify um, which participant was which to protect the privacy of our participants, of course. So this figure actually describes the complete procedure of linking these data set, but I will not go into details. Um, I'll just explain to you the most important steps uh, that we took. So that was linking NTR cohort data to CBS data on healthcare expenditure, and then subsequently also linking the genotype data uh, to that. So we started by taking data from the NTR participants um, for whom we had genotype data, and then we selected uh, the people that had given us permission uh, to link to uh, to link their own data to register uh, data, and that was actually quite a challenge because we have been collecting uh, data for on genotypes for many years, and we had to figure out which consents were um, uh, which informed consents contained uh, permission for linking and which didn't. So we had to make sure everyone had given the correct consent. Um, so to link those two together, we used the so-called A number, which is the number from the city council center. Um, and we used that to link our participant to CBS data because both the NTR and CBS have this identifier. Um, and that's a unique one. So that was actually quite an easy step. Um, if we would not have had this A number, uh, we could have used personal data like postal code, uh, initials, uh, date of birth, um, et cetera. But with twins, that's always quite tricky because a lot of those um, are similar in the twins, especially if you talk about young twins, even some twins even have the same initials. So then all the uh, matching variables are the same. Um, so, th but that step was actually not that difficult because we had this A number, so we could uh, we were actually able to link all the participants uh, to CBS data. Um, the next step was then to link the NTR genotype data. Um, but there, there was a complicating factor because these data, they're already stored on, uh, on the supercomputer and they're stored in a binary format. And they do not contain any um, identifiers. So the order of the file is the implicit identifier. And when we linked to CBS, the NTR identifier got encrypted and the file got reordered. So we, because we want, did not want to be able to uh, identify uh, people after linking with CBS, but that also meant that we could not, could not um, analyze our um, genotype data. 
So in the end, we actually solved this problem by allowing Surf to take on the role of trusted third party. And they set or randomized the order of the genotype data and then provided us with the key between the NTR identifiers and the new order of the genotype data. Um, and this complete procedure ensured that none of the uh, parties involved had access to all the linkage keys and neither could identify participants in the cohort nor in the administrative data uh, nor in the genotype data. So to verify that it actually worked because it was a lot of steps and we had a lot of different identifiers and we also pseudo randomized uh, the genotype data. Um, we actually, what we did was that we also run our analyses on height um, as reported by the participants. And we had height, we uploaded that together with the NTR cohort data and it underwent the same procedure of identifier encryption and pseudo randomization uh, of the genotype data. And since the results for height were already available because the previous study um, was already conducted, we could see whether our findings overlapped. And if the procedure was successful, then we would expect an overlap of, uh, of one, and that turned out to be 0.99. So we can conclude that the OSSC enabled us to link uh, sensitive data, the genotype data from NTR to also sensitive data from CVS, namely the um, healthcare expenditure data in a way that protected the privacy of the participants. And we did that on this uh, Odyssey Secure platform that then provided the required uh, high performance facilities that were needed uh, to run the large scale analysis that, uh, that we wanted to run, uh, which were not possible in the regular CVS uh, remote access environment.